just to make sure we're all on the same sheet of music, how many are here for the Amway meeting? Anyone here for that? Yeah. Uh, the results actually will be a little more applicable there. So what we'd like to do is to share with you some analysis that we've done of the equity market. And the core fundamental question is, can one glean asymmetrical information from the market as a whole uh, in order then to develop a portfolio that produces positive returns? That's the classic question. As we'll see, one of the arguments is, no, you cannot. Then on the other hand, you have Warren Buffett says, yes, you can. And so we're sort of stuck in the middle of those two. And by the way, uh, for those who are interested in what we're talking about, a journal article on these uh, remarks will be out in about two months. So if you send me an email, I'll be happy to send you the paper link, uh, if you will. So armed with that, uh, what we'd like to do is give a little bit of a background, an overview in terms of our analysis of what we looked at in terms of the equity markets, come up with a problem statement as to what did we attempt to demonstrate, look at our CART results, and then make some conclusions and recommendations in terms of where this research is going. And just again to set another predicate, we ran our results by a rather well-known investment house. Uh, and I'll repeat this at the end. The commentary was, hey, that's kind of interesting, but. Uh, and I'll get around to the but uh, at the end. So uh, again, the question is at hand, can one glean insights into these equity markets to your technical advantage, i.e. looking for asymmetrics in the valuation of those stocks? And so to approach the problem, we took the value line 100, which they call uh, the enigma, because in fact, it has done extremely well over many, many years in terms of outperforming the market overall. On the other hand, uh, it flies in the face of the FAMA model, which says you cannot glean any insights, technical or fundamental, in terms of market behavior. That is, information about prices other than Facebook immediately are distributed throughout the marketplace, and therefore there is no competitive advantage of doing any analytical mojo. You can't find anything. So we looked at the value line 100. Value line actually has 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s, and 500s. The 100s are the Mercedes Benz of the investment equities. And since we only had like 100 observations and literally uh, at least 60 candidate variants, we did a two-stage approach. Stage one, as highlighted under the models, we did a neural net analysis to call out the leading contenders, uh, and then we have performed a card analysis in order to operationalize the decision rules. So a two-stepper, one, to screen out uh, viable candidates, and then two, to come up with the decision rules, which is what we ended up laying on the financial house. Hey, here are some rules, and, and this is how you could operationalize the process. In terms of some of the uh, variables, we looked at some of the classic variables, uh, price momentum, for an example. And we looked this over uh, like a six-quarter uh, period, uh, which is a skimpy period, no doubt about it. But again, we were trying to test out the methodology, if you will. And then to this classic uh, inventory, we added some additional factors like Tobin's cube, uh, which is a metric used to describe the value of the firm, and another variable called entropy, which talks about the complexity or the level of uncertainty associated with the time series. So we've added those two into the mix along with the classical factors that were used to assess uh, stock performance again, within the context of this two-variable model. So, again, the challenge was, could we find any marginal assessment, improvement, in terms of the classic statement as, no, you cannot? And I put in the uh, uh, Warren Buffett rule, if you will, slightly different rule, but close enough, uh, that he, in fact, over his 40 years of investing, thinks you can. So, that, again, that's the, that's the challenge. So in terms of drilling down, uh, these were the broad 
variable strokes. Again, we had about 50 factors, ballpark number. Uh, price momentum, earnings momentum, valuation, an example of that would be Tobin's Cube. System performance, as an example, would be entropy. Now, an area we didn't get into would be economic activity. It's very complicated, but can be done, of uh, weaving in economic time series data like CPI or unemployment, weaving those onto the equity stocks themselves. It's a very complicated mojo, but you theoretically can do it, and this could be an extension of the work we've done. Those were the broad variable categories that we looked at. And so talking about entropy, entropy is a measure of system complexity or system uncertainty. And it's sort of complementary to the standard deviation, which measures the deviation from centrality. Uh, entropy, on the other hand, measures the amount of uncertainty in the signal. It was first proposed in a financial context uh, by Pinnis in um, the late to middle uh, 70s, uh, and we'll get into a little bit more detail on that. But it's the idea, is there within these time series uh, some level of complexity uh, that I can better characterize using an entropy measurement as opposed to a standard deviation? So they're in some ways complementary of each other. That's, that's sort of the notion. 